Loyalty is in short supply on the big screen. From science fiction epics to Quentin Tarantino actioners to comic book adaptations to even family-friendly animated flicks, here are the most shocking betrayals in movie history. In the Wachowski siblings genre-defining 1999 sci-fi epic The Matrix, viewers were introduced to a world in which humans have been dominated by machines after a lengthy war. The sun's light has been blocked out, and people have been placed into pods to live in the computer-simulated reality of the Matrix. When Tom Anderson, renamed Neo, learns the truth from his mentor Morpheus and his right-hand woman Trinity, he chooses to leave the Matrix behind and return to the real world. He then finds himself in a rundown dystopia where humans must hide from the machines to survive. But trouble is brewing in Morpheus's crew. Cypher, played by Joe Pantoliano, is secretly working with the Matrix's band of evil agents, trading his friends' livelihoods for a comfortable life of ignorant bliss. Ignorance is bliss. In a shocking turn during a mission, he leaves the Matrix for the real world and then brutally kills most of the ship's crew. It was a stunning betrayal that left audiences reeling in the aftermath. Neo ultimately ends up saving the day, but Cypher's actions nevertheless have serious consequences. Quentin Tarantino's 1992 feature-length debut, Reservoir Dogs, put the acclaimed director on the map in a big way. Throughout the movie, the gang of thieves attempting to pull off a diamond heist are known only by their code names – Mr. White, Mr. Blonde, Mr. Pink, Mr. Blue, Mr. Brown, and Mr. Orange. After the heist goes terribly wrong, the group kidnaps a policeman and tortures him in one of the film's most brutal and unforgettable scenes. But before long, the gang realizes that there's a mole in their midst. Mr. Orange, who was injured during an earlier shootout, confesses that he's an undercover cop after he shoots and kills Mr. Blonde. Mr. White is floored and devastated by his friend's betrayal. He ultimately kills Mr. Orange after a standoff, and Mr. Pink makes off with the diamonds, botching the entire heist and leaving pretty much everybody else for dead. Tarantino is no stranger to both shock value and violence, and he would go on to feature even more stunning betrayals in his career. But the one in Reservoir Dogs still stands out as perhaps the most startling twist in his filmography. In Jordan Peele's 2017 acclaimed horror film Get Out, audiences are introduced to a young couple, Chris and Rose, who are headed to visit Rose's family for a weekend. Though Chris is initially nervous that Rose's family will disapprove of their interracial relationship, Rose assures him that there won't be any problem so they head out to the remote family estate in the country. After Chris is introduced to Rose's parents, Missy and Dean, and her erratic brother Jeremy, he starts to settle in, but he also notices some strange things throughout the house, especially the questionable behavior of the black employees. After a party that goes awry, Chris wants to leave, and Rose readily agrees. But there's just one problem. Chris can't drive. As Rose tauntingly dangles the car keys in his face, he realizes that she's been in on her parents' gambit all along. She's actually been kidnapping Chris, as she has done with so many other black lovers before, to steal his body for a wealthy white patron to live in. Allison Williams' performance as Rose is pitch perfect, making for one of the most heartbreaking betrayals of all time. You were one of my favorites. Christopher Nolan's critically beloved Dark Knight trilogy features a darker side of Bruce Wayne's story than what we'd previously seen on the big screen, and that storytelling lens extends to some of Batman's most famous villains. In the series' middle installment, 2008's The Dark Knight, viewers are introduced to Nolan's pitch-black take on the Joker, played to perfection by Heath Ledger before his untimely passing. But while that performance has been deservedly hailed as a classic, there's also another villain lurking in plain sight. Introduced as Gotham's district attorney, the virtuous Harvey Dent sets out to save Gotham from lowlifes like the Joker, but after the supervillain kills Dent's girlfriend and Bruce Wayne's childhood love Rachel Dawes, Dent becomes a changed man, inside and out. With half his face blown off in an explosion caused by the Joker, Dent becomes Two-Face, known for flipping a coin to decide who lives and who dies in Gotham. Bruce Wayne has very few allies to begin with, and losing Dent in his prime is a serious blow, especially after they lose Rachel, the love of both of their lives. 
Wes Craven's 1996 horror classic Scream is widely regarded as one of the greatest slasher flicks of all time, thanks in large part to its clever storytelling and gutting twist ending. The film focuses on Sidney Prescott, a high school student grappling with the one-year anniversary of her mother's bloody death amidst a new string of killings in the sleepy small town of Woodsboro, California. Throughout the movie, the knife-wielding masked killer constantly stalks Sidney and her friends. The chase comes to a gruesome conclusion during a party where the killer dispatches most of Sidney's classmates. As it turns out, there's actually not one, but two killers. Sidney's boyfriend, Billy, and his goofy pal, Stu, have been working together, which explains how the masked ghost face often seem to be in two places at once. Not only are they responsible for the deaths of several teenagers, they were also the ones who killed Sidney's mom. Why did you kill my mother? Why? Why? You hear that, Stu? I think she wants a motive. <laughs> Ultimately, Sidney and a few other survivors rally together and kill Billy and Stu themselves, thus putting an end to their spree. But this betrayal was undeniably a horrible blow to Sidney, and it's one that horror audiences won't forget anytime soon. Over the course of the Harry Potter series, the students of Hogwarts end up with a new defense against the dark arts professor every single year thanks to a long-standing curse. In their fourth year, as chronicled in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, that teacher is Alastor Mad-Eye Moody, a heavily scarred and formidable wizard who bears a fake eye with a mind of its own. Mad-Eye teaches Harry and his classmates some pretty dangerous spells while telling them to remain constantly vigilant in the face of dangers like Lord Voldemort and his Death Eaters. But as it turns out, Mad-Eye isn't who he initially seems to be, or even Mad-Eye at all. As the International Triwizard Tournament comes to a close at Hogwarts, Harry discovers Mad-Eye's horrifying secret. He's actually a disguised Barty Crouch Jr., who's a wanted Death Eater, using Polyjuice Potion to impersonate Mad-Eye. After getting close to someone he thought he could trust throughout the year only to discover that his professor was really a Death Eater trying to deliver him to Voldemort, Harry feels betrayed, and it's not hard to understand why. Martin Scorsese's 2006 Best Picture-winning mob epic The Departed features plenty of betrayals and backstabbing, but one character stands out among the rest as the king of the double cross. Massachusetts State Police Officer Colin Sullivan might seem like a fine, upstanding man. He's played by Matt Damon, after all. But for years, he's been indebted to and working with mob boss Frank Costello and his clan, serving as a mole within the FBI to keep Costello's empire running. But his days may be numbered when Billy Costigan joins the police force in secret to work as a mole within Costello's organization, and the two men scramble to uncover the other mole first. Unfortunately for Costigan, Sullivan is selfish to a fault, and he will stab absolutely anybody in the back to save his own skin. After enduring his own personal betrayal when he finds out that Frank has been working as an informant for the police for years, Sullivan shoots Frank, his father figure. He then mows through anyone else he can, indirectly getting Costigan killed and directly killing several other police officers to try to salvage his reputation. But in the end, karma comes calling, as he's killed himself at the 11th hour. The original Star Wars trilogy features plenty of beloved characters, but few of them made as strong an impression as the dashing, quick-witted con man Lando Calrissian. But not everything he did was particularly lovable. One of his most shocking moments occurs in the second film, The Empire Strikes Back, which sees him betray a close friend and ally. When audiences first meet Han Solo's old friend Lando, the former gambler is working as the administrator of Cloud City, Although Lando welcomes Han with open arms, that embrace isn't totally warm, as he ends up stabbing his friend in the back. When faced with threats from Darth Vader, Lando hands Han over, allowing him to be encased in carbonite, while also giving Leia and Chewbacca over to Vader as well. Thankfully, Lando is ultimately given the chance to fully redeem himself by helping Leia and Chewbacca escape in the Millennium Falcon and eventually rescue Han from Jabba the Hutt. But in the moment, his betrayal stings so badly that fans are still talking about it to this day. Just 
Based on Ian McEwan's award-winning novel, Joe Wright's 2007 period piece Atonement spans several different time frames to tell the story of star-crossed lovers in 1930s England and their ultimate fates, both real and fictional. In 1935, a young Bryony Tallis takes notice as her beautiful older sister Cecilia begins a flirtation with Robbie, their wealthy family's groundskeeper. Bryony also has feelings for Robbie, and when she finds explicit letters from him that are meant for Cecilia, she gets the wrong idea. And then, when she finds Robbie and Cecilia in a compromising position in the family's library, she tells her family that Robbie assaulted Cecilia. Afterwards, Robbie is accused of another assault as well and sent away to prison. After serving his prison sentence and also fighting in World War II, Robbie starts a life with Cecilia in London. Bryony goes to apologize to them, thus seemingly resulting in a happy ending for all the main characters. But as it turns out, this ending is a fiction, concocted by a much older Bryony to atone for her sins. After Bryony's false accusation of Robbie, he died in the war before ever having a chance to reunite with Cecilia. While Cecilia died in one of the Blitz bombings in London, by writing a happy ending for her sister and Robbie, Bryony attempts to repair her betrayal but unfortunately, real life can't be rewritten, and her betrayal lingers as one of the most devastating betrayals anyone could possibly imagine. Brandy! Even beyond its mega-hit song Let It Go, Disney's 2013 animated flick Frozen is a notable installment in the studio's canon thanks to its clever plot and subversion of typical Disney storytelling tropes. As the film begins, viewers meet sisters Anna and Elsa, who must soldier on after their parents' tragic death, despite the rift between them caused by Elsa's magical ice-based powers. During Elsa's coronation as Queen of Arendelle, Anna falls head over heels in love with the handsome, dashing Prince Hans, who seems like the perfect Prince Charming. Despite Elsa's misgivings about her sister marrying somebody she's just met, Anna and Hans get engaged. As it turns out, Elsa was right to be suspicious. Hans is far from a classic Disney prince, as he's actually an Arendelle to kill both Anna and Elsa and claim the throne for himself and the Southern Isles from which he hails. In the end, just as Hans is about to kill Elsa, Anna sacrifices herself to save her sister, and Elsa then saves her life in return. Even though Anna does find her true love in the end in the form of Kristoff, it's the love between sisters, not romantic love, that triumphs over everything else as it proves powerful enough to overcome even the deadliest of betrayals. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.